This update arrives alongside the Warden and the Paunch Lords pack, bringing with it many content revisions, balances, bug fixes, and quality of life improvements to the Eye of the Vortex and Mortal Empires campaigns. Even if you haven't purchased the Warden and the Paunch, Altharia and the Grim, Grom de Paunch, and their attendant factions of Ivress and the Broken Axe tribe will appear in your campaigns under AI control. The big news is the long-awaited Greenskins rework. The old war mechanics, where a Greenskins army would hit peak fightiness and spawn a second AI-controlled companion army, are gone for good. A war is now a huge faction-wide event, which mirrors those of Legend. A war is now something players can strategize and plan around, where expertise nets you bigger rewards, the bigger the challenge. You now have full control over all aspects of the war. There's so much, we've made a playlist of our favorite rework videos and slapped it in the description, so check it out if you want to know more. We've also reworked a ton of mechanics such as ammo consumption for volley and burst fire weapons, as well as legendary lord characteristics. But we always want to deliver you those more subtle quality of life changes as well. Drop us a comment if you have an idea for a small tweak that will have a large positive impact for Total War Warhammer 2 players. And if you don't have an idea, drop us a comment anyway, it helps us make more videos like this. As usual, we've spruced up the Mortal Empires map this time with a Badlands flavoured update. Four new Skaven factions have appeared in the world, Clan Vulcan have emerged from their warrens beneath Fire Mountain and now control parts of the Eastern Badlands, Clan Ferric have claimed parts of the Zuthbar province, Clan Spittle can be found in Festa Spike, the region of the Grey Mountains previously known as Grimhold, and Clan Creepus have been dispatched by their masters Clan Eshen in pursuit of a certain Warpstone meteorite. The dwarves of Clan Helhine, exiled from their homes in the Dragonback Mountains, have headed to the Plain of Bones in search of dragon hordes, much to the distaste of a certain dragon prince. Speaking of which, Imric, the Lord of Dragons and direct descendant of the Phoenix King, swoops into battle alongside the Warden and the Paunch for free. You should definitely check out Cody Bond's guide to Imric if you want to know more. I've linked it, as well as Imric's Steam page, in the description below. There's been a slew of campaign balance changes as well. The High Elves have received a mini rework to keep them fighting fit, and there's battle balance changes too. Stop me if you've heard this one before. You've recruited a fresh-faced group of Chameleon Skinks to support your Saurus push, the lines clash, and the Skinks start volleying the enemy, then you realize you've poisoned your own troops again. Poison and other contact effects on ranged weapons have long been a double-edged sword. Friendly fire meant you could poison your own troops just as readily as the enemies, leaving you with a zero-sum result. With this update, friendly fire will still cause damage, but will never inflict debilitating contact effects on your own units. This also applies to vortices, bombardments, and other sources of friendly fire debilitation, all except for poisoned wind. Strider has long been an estranged attribute, providing niche benefits that were hard to take advantage of. We've significantly expanded its behavior with this rework. This will also affect the woodsman attribute, Strider units now feel more snappy and responsive, being able to rocket up the hills that dot almost all maps without losing pace, while passing through trees allows them unparalleled mobility within densely forested areas. As part of reworking Strider, we've also re-evaluated where it is available. It is now granted by certain ancillaries, and more units have gained Strider. Previously, if a unit was interrupted during a volley or burst fire attack, they would lose any remaining ammunition in that volley or burst. This was especially punishing for units like warp fire throwers and rattling guns. These units will now correctly retain the ammunition that they didn't fire when they were interrupted, so they don't lose out on any damage potential. We carried on evolving the stat lines and costs of our older units to keep them relevant in the post Warden and Paunch world. Bugwise, the headline is the splash damage calculation fixes. We've addressed two important bugs with our splash damage system relating to how damage is calculated, and it should now splash a lot more consistently. There's been a ton more bug fixes, so check out the full patch notes to find out more. Similarly, projectile short range spell damage reliability should go up significantly thanks to additional bug fixes. We rebalanced quite a few spells and abilities whilst we were at it. Finally, we recently ran an experimental beta called The Proving Grounds to test some more extreme changes to in-game systems and mechanics without affecting the main game. We've implemented a few minor changes based on our learnings from beta feedback and may look at implementing more in the future, so thanks for participating, and thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.